Neutrino's nice first in chat. Uh, <laughs> hi everyone, how's it going? You're right, this is another episode of... Oh no, it's not. That's how I started doing the intro for the Oxford Online Maths Club. That's not not, not correct at all, is it? This is the Sunday Chill Math stream. This is the unprofessional one. I saw somebody on the Thursday show say, wait, there's a Sunday live stream? Um, <laughs> do my own thing on Twitch. Uh, how's it going, chat? You alright? I see Herb's here as well. Hi, oh, Herb. Uh, anyone else who wants to join in chat? I think I've got some people around not in chat, which is fine as well. Just want to be clear. I'm learning people's names in chat because if you post in chat with something that looks like a name, then I, I get to learn people's names. <laughs> this isn't like a closed club or something. This, this is everyone. Roy. Oh, hello, Thrice Shy. Hello. Uh, you see, this is me just reading out usernames. <laughs> I'm getting better at reading out usernames. I'm getting better at learning that you don't read out the numbers. Uh, that's, that's part of it. Except in Neutrino. Neutrino's got a number as part of the word. you got to read that one. It's tricky business, this streaming. Um, morning, Matt and Ash. Um, my plan today is to go through some slides for a talk that I did in a school on Monday. So sometimes I get invited to people's schools to come and do a kind of talk about maths. Sometimes I get asked to do a talk about maths. Sometimes I get to do, get asked to do a talk about Oxford admissions, which is my job, or uh, other stuff in that kind of space. Um, I usually try to do a talk that contains a bit of maths because I think it's a missed opportunity not to do some maths. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's what I did for this one. Yeah, Mount Nash, the, you, if you've seen the poster for this, let's try and find the poster. Ah, awkward. So, somebody. So, <laughs> yeah, so Thrice Shy shows people. Thrice Shy, I think, has now said that they're. I'm being really careful because I saw Thrice Shy post the. Um, an image of the poster, but they deleted the name of the school. So I'm being really careful not to dox them. <laughs> I'm going to try and do this whole thing without saying which school I was at, <laughs> so that you can't put it together. Um, I think the poster was made with AI. So it was a, a sort of AI thing. I think it had a kind of big graphic thing to it. Uh, let's see if I can find some of it and then uh, and just show you the bit that it's a very impressive poster. It had my um the thing on it. Oh, I found the write up. Oh, how do I find the poster? <laughs> Wait, there's a big photo of people at it. Wait, what is the the school? I can't show you because I'm trying not to dox people. <laughs> the school's done a whole write up. Ah, oh. lovely. Right, well, I can't show anybody that. Okay, uh. Oh, okay, I can show people a bit of this. Uh, so the poster they made, hang on, hang on, I've got a great plan here. I've got a great plan. This is gonna be brilliant. Uh, this, but then we paste here, and then, and then, no, wait, did it wrong. Copy image, still not good. Oh, good enough. And then we black out, the bits that Thrice Shy wants to black out, uh, which is that. Should have done this in advance. And that. I think I've done it. Yeah, I think I've done it. Okay, okay. So the poster that the school made is is this, where they made this lovely quest themed poster for me, which I liked a lot in in a way. In that, I mean, it's. AI are it's put lots of like crosses and plus signs or are they plus signs in the background or over the top of it? So I don't know if Galois theory in the minds of AI is quite crossy plusy. But they've got this big big poster up and it's got my little stupid departmental photo on. Uh, funny story, I sent them two suggestions for the title for the talk. Um, I said I could call the talk Quest for the Quintic or Galois Theory, and then they put both on the, well, it's sort of fine. It works as a title with a little subtitle, 
Um, but when I sent them the email, I was imagining these being sort of mutually exclusive titles. <laughs> but it works, it's fine. <laughs> okay, it's probably AI, isn't it? Anyway, good. Okay, right. <sighs> AI. I think I think probably with ControlNet, by the way, probably some ControlNet stuff to get it to do the G and the, the Gawa notation, which I didn't use in the talk. Uh, the actual talk, all the graphics are done by me. Uh, you can see some of them down the left. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to run through. <laughs> we are going to run through quest for the Gawa theory. Either will be fine. Um, we're going to run through the slides. I've got some notes about what I thought was good and bad. Um, essentially, I've done I've done a talk like this once before on this topic, but it was quite different. So I added in lots of new stuff to be to make it more of a presentation talk I've done something I did a weird one at some point if you were at the weird one then you know you know why it was weird um, okay <laughs> so here's here's the title slide it says quest for the Quintic um, in Indiana Jones font uh, and it's got who I am on it which is fair enough uh, and I'm gonna quickly type myself some notes um, so I think my aims for this are to demonstrate that uh, maths is about looking for structure I have these kind of in my head, right, of why are we doing this, what's going on. Um, and I think Gawa theory is really neat. And polynomials are relevant for a lot of students. Like, there's some relationships there between what people learn at school and what they later learn. Okay. Overall, one of my comments, which uh, there's a big one, I might come back to this. Um, oh, you actually have feedback. You can join in with the feedback in 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 chat if you like. Um, as I go through, I'm going to do my feedback. If you want to add in feedback, especially critical things, um, and then maybe we're going to make some edits. Right. Okay. So we started by having a slide where I could talk about how quadratics have you know solutions um but oh, this is gonna be irritating because i've got to preview the animation can i make that oh, let's just delete it for now whoops whoa that went way down there okay okay um and then i showed them a second equation uh and talked about how the solutions can't be written it's anything like that uh which i kind of told myself i was going to justify a bit later on i am terrified uh, that there is a mistake. Um, so now I'm going to spend a little bit of time thinking about that quadratic. <laughs> what would it be? It'd be minus b is six plus or minus the square root of so the crowd. The, the crowd of people. There's quite a few people like this thing. The crowd of people just look really concerned. Or I don't know. I started weird. I did some introduction about myself. I did some uh, anecdotes about what I'm up to. And then I showed them quadratic, this quadratic equation and people looked a bit concerned for me. Um, possibly just because of my life story at the start. But yes, <laughs> let's check for typos. 36 minus 12 is 24. So when I square root that, I get 2 root 6. But then it's all over 2. I'm good, right? I'm good. Okay. Oh, uh, Maybe it kind of looks like I'm doing it wrong. Because by coincidence, that's 3 and 6. Maybe that's why people looked at it funny, because like it, it looks like I've just got the quadratic formula wrong. Like I believe that it's c plus or minus root b. Maybe that's why. I don't know. I think I'm. I think I think there's no mistake. It's just a. Uh, is this a good example? The quadratic. Um, yeah. Uh, people were confused. The talk's confusing. Not clear what I'm doing. Roadmap. Going from one topic to another without connections. That's good. I like that. Okay. It's good feedback. It's not good for a talk. You show them the Quintic. And the thing I've tried to do is try to make these look really similar. That's why I picked these numbers. Because I want to talk about this Quintic a bit more. Um, 
when I've previously talked about when I've previously tried to talk about how you can't solve quintics, it sounded quite nebulous and quite you know abstract. This idea that uh, in general the structure of the roots of the solutions, but um, um, I thought it'd be helpful to just sort of try to focus on this particular quintic. But maybe this is stealing thunder from the surprise at the end. This is kind of the answer at the end. It's not. I did the slightly odd structure where I tried to structure it as a, when I was a kid I was told this and then I had to go on a quest to explain it. Um, and I think it's time for the big bit of feedback to myself, which is, um, whoa, spelling. I think the quest theming is bad. Or at least not helpful. Um, it was a good theme for the live stream when we were on live in about September and I did back to back long long journey of discovery and trying to find out about Quintics. That was a good name for that series of live streams. But the talk doesn't feel very quest like. The talk feels more like a Gamma theory talk. Um, and trying to trying to Trying to explain why it's like a quest while also explaining why Galois theory is like this other thing was maybe one extra level of confusion or like one extra weird thing that's going on here that that, that didn't help. Uh, so go with yeah, I know alliteration. It is. It did turn out to be called or Galois theory. Let's do that. New title. That doesn't make any sense out of context. I'm going to open this up again in a, in a month and be very confused. Can you remove the background in PowerPoint these days? Oh, too complicated. Too complicated. Bam! Thanks, PowerPoint. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, is it going to be sort of intelligent about this? That's not quite worked. That was rubbish. <laughs> AI, eh? What's that like? Ugh. Right, okay. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> I found a better way. There's a website that makes these. There we go. I found a better way. Don't worry. Don't worry, chat. I fixed it. The talk's now called All Galois Theory. <laughs> what have we done? Uh, yeah, people didn't understand how the field extensions. So we'll get to the field extensions. We we we. The talk is too ambitious as well. It's trying to talk about lots of different things. Um, there are elements of it that I really like, and I think it's close to a good talk. It's not quite there. Um, I have it as like a six out of 10. Um, maybe the general movie's a five. It might be a five. It's too much. Yeah. Hopelessly simple tools, hopelessly complex problem. Yep. Uh, okay, okay. Let's get on to that. Um, so we've got some equations, which I think maybe don't do this. Uh, I don't show you this at all. Uh, yeah, right. People didn't want to see this. Uh, okay, so then we did the checkerboard puzzle thing. And I talked about this quite a bit, um, partly because I've made a snazzy animation. So this 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 slide looks like this to start off with, and then there's an animation to try doing it. And I think this is important that you present it uh, not a chessboard, uh, or like don't say chessboard. I might have even said this in the talk, right? Don't say chessboard, 
um, it's an 8x8 grid that uh, you're trying to cover with 2x1 square, 2 by one rectangles. I know, I uh, and <laughs> I'm aware of the issue where once you've made an animation, you put time in, it's very hard to just delete the slide. Um, it makes you feel bad. Um, but I also do want to keep this because I made an animation. <laughs> I know. I, I'm, I think the... So this is going to serve as a kind of analogy for Galois theory. I mean, it's not Galois theory. It's it's just a parity thing. People understood this part. People understood this part. Great. Okay. I think a lot of people have maybe seen this mutilated chessboard problem before, um, which is a blessing and a curse because people like seeing things they've seen before. Um, that makes them happier and makes them feel like they understand a lot more of what's going on. But the point I'm making is... Um, kind of two things, right? Um, so this is an example of something we I mean, can't solve. There's this complicated bit in Galois theory where you're trying to you're trying to say that you can't do something. You can't write the solutions to this particular quintic using radicals and field operations. Um, so this is an example of something we can't solve, um, and there's there's a reveal. Um, the reason is nice. Um, so I try to get people to imagine how you might try to prove this that, that this can't be done by imagining all the cases. I thought maybe I. Maybe this was fun enough that I wanted a kind of slide about it, but I'm not quite sure I could do it justice of like, you'd have to consider, let's see what we can do. So let's quickly think here. Uh, let's get rid of these for a second. Um, and uh, these, yeah, that did work, great. So if was, the slide would have to be something like this to go consider what would happen if you put one here then either you put one here or you'd put one like this. There's kind of two possibilities for what you would do next. Um, so we tried to talk about how there's lots of things you could check. If you're trying to do a kind of naive proof where you're proving that you can't cover these 62 squares using 31 rectangles, um, the naive proof is something like possibilities. Can I have this like rotate around to show that there's Maybe I should just have one that rotates. Oh, whoops. Mm -mm -mm. You hadn't seen it before, but you worked it out. That's the best feeling <laughs> when you get a slide ahead just by sheer cleverness. Uh, maybe it's two slides. Maybe it's um. Maybe it's one like this and one like this. I think I tried to say, maybe this was stupid, but if you put it like this, then you can infer the next one down, but you still have a lot of possibilities. Right, so I think maybe I have a couple of couple of slides like this. I love that, by the way. The rectangle's kind of the wrong aspect ratio. It's a bit awkward. Uh, regret. Sometimes, sometimes in PowerPoint, I think I know what I'm doing, and then I do something like right-clicking, and it's like, no idea which of these things I want. I just wanted to get rid of the animation. Okay. Oh, hello. Uh, oh, you're offering promotion of my channel. I don't think I want to do that. Oh, the price is lower. Oh, and you're guaranteed to be the best. Oh. Wow. A huge number of custom settings sounds like exactly what I don't want. <laughs> have, you got, have you got anything with fewer settings? <laughs> oh, bro. I was just complaining about PowerPoint. Look, give me something that's easy. Right, good. Okay. And maybe, oh, I like that it copies the um, start to work out all the possibilities. Ah, oh, this one might be quite fun, actually. You could really convince people that you were about to show, like, 2 to the 31-ish, kind of. It's not even that. But it's about to show them billions of possibilities. Like, maybe we put this one here. And then, oh, good news. In this case, we would be able to put another one here. Now join me on the next step where we think about what to put up there at the top. But actually this is daft because, has this got any animations? 
pleased with this. Okay, so maybe we do some, maybe we do some of this to actually have some slides for working out all the possibilities. And then say this is going to be a this is going to be a nightmare. This is going to be awful. We don't want to do that. So instead, we want to do uh, something like this. And I think I got this to be a kind of morph. Ah, that's going to be too wide. Recurring problem, I think. If I show you the presentation, it's going to be too wide. I think we've got a kind of morph thing. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> uh, to reveal the, the, the reveal the checkerboard patterning. Um, and then also reveal the dominoes being like this. Um, I know that's too wide for the screen. Um, and then reveal the text hopelessly simple. And I maybe want hopelessly hopelessly symmetric is something I considered. So I want a tagline here. I want a tagline here so some text appears on the screen to describe how the, the blocks that we're using are hopelessly simple. They're really simple building pieces. And the thing we're trying to build is in some sense complicated. Um, and ideally, I would have something that I get to say later on. So that later, when we're trying to build a complicated Gawa group using really simple ideas of just putting in the roots of a of a uh, roots of x to the n, that we wouldn't be able to build such a complicated structure. There's something I want to return to. Unfortunately, simple and symmetric um, are both keywords in group theory <laughs> and neither of them are the right keyword and that really annoys me that unfortunately in in the group theory towards the end um symmetric sounds like it's something to do with the symmetry group um and it's going to be a distraction if people are maybe thinking about the symmetries of pieces rather than the symmetries of just per permuting the roots that might be a distraction, and that stopped me from saying it later on again. Um, I really do want to use hopelessly simple. Simple is also a word that gets used in group theory, and unfortunately, in the context here, the punchline of the punchline is kind of the symmetric group with five elements is a simple group. Or is that quite? That's not quite true. No, it has a normal subgroup. Sorry, a five is simple. <laughs> Whatever. This is the thing where something is simple at the end. Um, ha! Huh. Maybe get rid of the quintic. Ha! Huh. My driving fo focus for learning this material might be dead. I mean, it's gone from the title. Ha! Huh. Abandon all quintics, what would that look like? Kill that. Solve a problem. Solve a different problem. <sighs> but I still want to show you the equations. We'll get to the equations in a second. Um, ha! Huh. And then you get some offhand stuff. And then we can throw in some other examples as well, like trisecting angles. And do Gower theory more generally. Ha! Huh. Quest theme is not helpful. Maybe the quintic theme is not helpful. Maybe people in the audience don't care about solving polynomials as much as I do. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, I know. The big equation jump square is fantastic. Let's go there next. Um, so then after introducing the idea of these pieces being hopelessly simple, I tried to do some stuff with tangrams. I personally really like tangrams. Um, it's this little puzzle with seven pieces. You can put them together to make a square. Spoilers on the left. You can also put them together to make this rather attractive duck. Um, uh, and a point that I was trying to make. Yeah, I have a mug with these on. Uh, not here at the moment. <laughs> um, The point I was trying to make is I guess there's a there's a puzzle problem solving thing here where you can use these pieces to make the dark. Um, 
and yeah, there's some colouring in. So we talked about talked briefly about how well, these are tangrams, they're a really good puzzle. Um, what if you were trying to make this majestic duck where I've actually coloured it in? Um, Um, you can't make this one because you realise, aha, this duck's really colourful and all the pieces are all the same colour, so it's ridiculous. Um, this is a different attempt at revealing that, revealing that your building blocks are in some, ha some way all pretty straightforward. They've got something in common, whereas your target doesn't. Um, I thought about this is kind of where I started. <laughs> the talk's never in the sequence that you think of it, right? So I started with thinking about uh, like an analogy where you try to build something out of Lego, bro Le Lego blocks, um, and there were going to be diagrams of like, here's a Lego model, can you build it with these pieces? And then ah, reveal, actually, all the Lego bit, all the Lego bricks were red. Uh, the the thing you're trying to build is like rainbow colours. It's impossible. Uh, and then I thought. I'm not very good at drawing, so I should go for something 2D. Is there anything like Lego bricks but 2D? I've got tangrams. And then we thought chessboards afterwards. Right, uh, our people did have this. Finding the colour in the problem. Yeah, okay, okay, that's a, that's a talk suggestion. Colour analogy. I've got a really good quote on the next slide that I like a lot, um, and I would like to keep it. Um, it's Andrew Wiles talking about problem solving. I like this problem solving idea for a theme for the talk. Um, so you get, here's the quote, and I read it out because it's great. Um, it's Andrew Wiles describing what it's like solving math problems. Uh, I think this quote is in the BBC documentary, the Horizon documentary, and it's also in the book. Um, you're in a mansion, it's dark, you stumble around, gradually you learn where the stuff is. Six months or so, you find the light switch, you turn it on, and suddenly it's all limited, you can see exactly where you were. Um, that quote is not about colouring in ducks, but it is about suddenly realising something. Um, yeah, okay, okay. Try show's gonna do some advice. It's such a good quote. Um, it really gives you that kind of, I mean, light bulb moment is being literal about it because you've got a light bulb in there. But also, it kind of makes it more, I don't know, I like the idea of becoming becoming familiar with the stuff in the darkness is something that people, people don't talk about enough. Um, like you, you start to get expertise in navigating the darkness, and then you find the light switch and it's all easy. It's a really good metaphor. It's Andrew Wiles. Um, and then you get a laugh, because then you show them the next line, which is, then you move into the next room and spend another six months in the dark, which is fantastic. <laughs> it's just a really good Andrew Wiles quote. Um, and you're doing two and you get a laugh. So this is good for school talk, we think. I should probably use this quote more in more stuff, uh, partly because Andrew Wiles has an, an Oxford connection and partly because it's just really great. Uh, I've got some responsibility to promote Oxford mathematicians. Um, Math building in Oxford's called the Andrew Wiles building. Uh, right. <laughs> it could be six months, could be 20 years, right. I like, yeah, in some sense it's an Andrew Wiles thing to say, well, yeah, six months. But it's just one room at a time, right? Um, okay, this was a good quote. I liked, I liked this a lot. So we've got, yeah, we've got this link about problem solving, then we realised. Well, the chessboard one feels really good, because... The chessboard one feels really good because it's a kind of problem you might see somewhere else. It sort of feels like an interview question or, or something like that. It feels like I'm preparing you to actually solve problems in your life. Whereas the tangram one is a bit mad. How could it possibly be that you were trying to make a duck and then realised that the, da the duck was not in fact in silhouette? Maybe there's a light bulb element to this? It feels like I'm undermining the point of tangrams, the idea that I'm taking a tangram thing. It's not quite the right framing somehow. Tangram puzzles are always successful. You're trying to prove that you can do something. I don't have that element in this in this analogy. Um, I don't have this kind of idea. You're trying to build something with a limited set of pieces. You feel cheating, right? <laughs> it's, 
it feels like I'm it feels almost like I'm telling you you're stupid for trying to make the dark it's never going to be that good um oh blindfolded is good you are blindfolded that's good I like that welcome to chat R. <laughs> oh I like this username <laughs> welcome to chat R apocalypse <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole world building element in that username. That's fantastic. The pirates have taken over. Or, closer inspection, the aardvarks have taken over. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Two up with me a minute. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Um, Marcher is the same for activities you could be doing. Solving problems, getting used to struggling over long periods of time and often failing. Getting used to failing. And using that to realise there's something else you need to understand first and go off and doing that before coming back to the problem. Now it is good advice to go off and understand more things and come back to the problem. It I've paused because the quote thrush I posted in chat, sorry, sort of gives a little bit of the impression that you need to go off and find something and learn something more. Maybe that's true, maybe that's true for a lot of puzzles. Um which can be hardening, you know, I, I sometimes say carry around the problem in the back of your head. Carry it around in the back of your head and then maybe you'll learn something or see something that reminds you of a way to do the problem that you're holding in the back of your head. Um, I don't know, maybe you're brushing your teeth and you have an idea for the problem that you're storing in the back of your head. Um, you don't want to make it sound like you're stuck because you haven't seen chessboard theory, the incredible maths theory that you just haven't been taught yet. You don't want to make it seem like an external idea needs to come in. Um, in a way, or well, maybe it does, I guess. Maybe you think to learn something new, but that can be, that can be, that could sometimes be bad advice for someone to say, oh, no, 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 you can't do this problem yet because no one's told you the answer. And that's not what the quote says, but um, it's something I'm conscious of is trying not to tell people, not to tell people to give up or to just wait until someone tells you basically the answer. Um, but at the same time I do want to ask people questions I do want to ask people questions the answer to which they can sort of work out but they might learn later on okay uh, right by the way you are blindfolded okay then we've got the quote and then we have maybe the strongest element of equations in this which is we had a quick look at some equations for solving some the quadratic equation and the other ones and this bit of the talk is really good because people reacted to this bit, which is what I want. It was so we showed the quadratic formula, and I really felt like this one. I double checked it, so we're all good. I've got the a's and b's in different places because whatever. Um, I've divided through by the leading coefficient, so maybe it's not quite the quadratic formula people uh, were expecting to see. Um, but the the plan is to do the kind of jump scare. Uh, to show the cubic formula, <laughs> where I notice now that I haven't, I haven't quite been fair. I haven't formatted these the same way. So the cubic one is listed R one, R two, R three. Really, I should list this one R one, R two. Uh, just to make it a little bit more fair. Um, the cubic formula is really horrible. Um, most people don't write it out fully like this. I had to do some digging until I found this this Planet Math website where, bless them, absolutely brilliant contribution. They have typed out in MathJax the full, nicely formatted cubic formula. This is what it actually is. You'll notice that there are some repeated terms that appear in here a lot. So normally when people are actually solving cubic or descri even describing how to solve the cubic, they tell you to calculate that first. Um, or something like that. Hell, I, there's also a 9ab27. And, you know, they kept telling you to calculate a lot of stuff and do something with like a depressed cubic to move the b's around. Um, yeah, series of substitutions. In the Galois theory notes that we were looking at for the Quintacrest, there was a bit about solving the cubic, which talked about finding the discriminant and doing these kind of different steps to it. Uh, and I think there's something to say there about how. Um, um, about how the cubic was originally solved. Uh, the kind of, yeah, <laughs> it's poor, poor cubics. Um, oh. 
there's something to say here about how people learned how to solve cubic equations before they had this kind of stuff. Um, this is not a realistic human solution. Um, I think there's Cardano's solution takes the form of a poem, so I should probably go and look that up uh, in Italian, right? Maybe you only want N. Thanks, autocorrect. So now I'm going to try and look it up. Yeah, it's this sort of thing. Uh, yeah, here it is. So I probably need to go and read this Scientific American thing. Yeah, it's in Italian. Quando c'è cubo con le cose presso, se io quickly a quote numero discreto, voi will do we ultra different DNS. So I'm not going to learn this, am I? And I don't speak Italian. Looks fun though. Okay, link. Is this blog called Roots of Unity? Why does it say Roots of Unity up here? Is that the name of the blog? I'd love that to be the name of the blog. Let's check. No, <laughs> it's not the name of the blog. Or if it is, I can't find it. Ah, Italian. Okay, uh, and then for fun, I put up the Quartic, where the Quartic is much worse. Just hats off to Planet Math, where someone has typed this all out for their website and then I've taken some screenshots of it um, to show people. Nobody does this as a formula because it, it keeps going. So for this I did I did a kind of animation sort of thing where, will this work if I do do this? Yeah, okay, so that it would scroll and then scroll again and the last bit's really got really tiny writing so this is fun to have on the screen and then zoom out and this was fun to just like show show people that like oh my goodness the quartic is got this really horrible really horrible equation nobody in practice uses it like this obviously um, but I think something I like about this is the the kind of jump scare now I've ruined the surprise a bit by framing it like you can't at the top saying you can't solve the quintic so this this is it there isn't a next one um that this is a very bad a very complicated equation very good complicated equation um, but there isn't a next one um and depending on how much quintic stuff um we're doing you depending on how much quintic stuff we're doing uh this might or might not be big or relevant or important. Oh, quick PowerPoint tip. Uh, if you want to achieve an effect like that, the easiest way is to have the image or whatever you want to have your scrolling effect on, to have it just have it all there, but going way off the side of the screen. Copy the slide, move it over a bit, and apply the morph transition. So uh, the morph transition is the best thing to be added to PowerPoint this decade. It's fantastic. It spots if your image is the same or similar. It does the transition. It smoothly, smoothly animates it. It's fantastic. Um, it does the, the zoom out as well. It's just because it's the same image, image but smaller. Um, you can do so much cool stuff by just taking the image and like uh, zooming in. Uh, oh, I made blank, blank slide to show the problem first. I like that. Uh, let's do that with an animation up here. Problem first, then jump scare solution. Quick check, I've done that right. So problem first, big gap for the for the solution. There it is. Problem, hello. Oh, uh, solution. Problem, solution. Scroll and scroll again. Zoom out. That didn't quite work. Zoom out. Okay. Something like that. Hello, Super Henrik in chat. Um, nice to see you. Uh, welcome to chat. Okay, new chat people today. Uh, I've got the R, the R Apocalypse uh, as well. Good. Okay. Sorry, I should not read out Apocalypse again. It's got a good chance of making me laugh too much. Uh, okay. I'm trying to make this talk work at too many levels. I don't think I was trying to make the talk work at any level. I realised halfway through. Ha ha ha. 
I realized halfway through that I was assuming lots of stuff about complex numbers. And... <laughs> uh, all the times I was mentioning complex numbers, I was expecting people to... I was expecting that to land as if it was a good example. Uh, huge... Oh, I see. Huge solution before, but no solution. Um, oh, okay, so maybe this is one more slide. Ah, okay, that's a fun concept. Uh, so... Solve quintic. Uh, surprise, no equation appears. That's a fun, that's a fun idea. I like that a lot. Yeah, not great at either level. <laughs> um, a noble failure. Surprise, nothing there. And I do want to make that clearer by... I don't want people to think that quintics don't have any roots. This is this, the situation is weird, right? Is that they there are quintics with oh, I can now it's a rational coefficient, so I'm jumping over in terms of tone, right? In terms of technical language. Uh, maybe I just maybe this talk is for people who know complex numbers. When do you learn complex numbers? Complex numbers at the start of further math, so you might not know about complex numbers until the start of year 13. We get away with it, right? Complex numbers are just a really nice example of a field extension. Okay, okay. We can salvage this. There's a good talk in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Might involve ditching all of the bits that I thought the talk was doing. Uh, let's go back up to the top then. Uh, is this a talk just for people to know about? Do people need to know complex numbers to appreciate? Complex equations. Yeah, okay. First and last thing we learned about in year 13. Hmm, <laughs> full circle. So maybe this should reduce scope a little bit. Uh, I mean, it should reduce scope a lot. It's all over the place. There's now some boring slides, which I wrote in a hurry, very near the deadline very near the start of the talk, where I wrote some stuff in to try and add in text about fields. I don't like these slides. I want to get rid of them. Uh, I tried to it, tried to introduce the kind of setting to talk about what a field is. And this slide is so boring. Uh, it's not good. And then this is important, but not good. So maybe I don't say field extension. Maybe the problem solving version of this uh, okay, so if I know the audience for this talk in particular had done complex numbers in year twelve, so maybe I got away with more, got away with more than I I would next time I do the talk in the future. Okay, so uh, we experimented with a few things here. I feel like I've got some ideas. I don't like it when you get complex argument. Is this your sign? Do you s it's a sign for sine. Time to use sine and cosine. Um, I think it's I think it is weird that real matrices can have complex eigenvalues. Um, sorry, the real numbers are just not not closed under the sort of the sort of operations that you might want to do. Yeah. Um, complex eigenvalues for your differential equations. Maybe there's a way to sneak some complex numbers in but make less of a big deal of them. Uh, so, hmm. the thing that I built, and I'm, I'm on the fence about whether or not this is you know, useful. If I'm talking about polynomials in this talk, 
I want to talk about roots of unity. And I want to try and give the impression that the roots of unity are related together and that they're nice. I think there's something here where we're taking something quite advanced from a third year Galois theory course that where there's a proof that field extension when you throw in the roots of unity um, is not too hard to understand in some sense. What do I mean there? I mean that the quotient is cyclic. And it's not obvious, is it? That's kind of obvious. <laughs> um, I feel like you can illustrate this quite nicely. It's just a faff trying to explain why we're doing it and what we're doing. So maybe the root in is more like, I want to show, hmm, yeah, we, this is the point of this is the hopelessly simple to say that the things you get when you do nth roots hopelessly simple and and this things that you get is doing a lot i think i focus too much on trying to give a flavor of what the things that you get means or what it looks like um and not enough about how what this is like so we have this kind of demo of a field extension and we got someone from the audience to someone from the audience came up to help me with Desmos, which was much appreciated. Uh, so they were operating Desmos for me. Um, the Desmos activity, the Desmos visualization that I've got. Oh, hang on, hang on. There's a, oh, you're the Thrush is recommending colorings for me. The roots of un unity are monochrome. Oh, yeah, let's go to the remaining ones. There's something here, isn't there? So I tr I've tried to make a couple of visualizations of what happens when you throw in a root of an equation. I think there's a there's a backbone of this that gives you some insight into what happens in Galois theory with polynomials in particular. That um, when you try to write down an equation, you're trying to write down an expression for a particular root, but when you write down that expression, you're the numbers that you get, the numbers that you can express like that, uh, form something called a field that's an extension over the field you had before. Yes, I had glamorous existence, and I called them such in the in the talk. Um, so I had two Desmos things, which this one's not very visually interesting, um, and has got some extra complexity in it. And I have an image. What I'm trying to do is to demonstrate how. If you take the rational numbers and you chuck in the square root of two or the square root of six or something, um, here I think I'm chucking in the square root of two, then you can build lots of interesting numbers. Um, if you can make square root of two and you have all the rational numbers, then you could have an equation for three plus root two or something. Uh, yeah, so this one is supposed to be everything you can make of the form a plus b root two. I don't have any slides that set this up, so I think it was unmotivated and weird. Um, the visualization is is odd. I've got lots of dots on the number line. Lots of dots on the number line to show different things that are made with a plus b root two. And there's a fudge here, uh, a kind of bodge factor because I'm only showing things with a and b whole numbers. So there's some complexity here of making like one, two, root twos over here, one plus root twos over here, and I've done the dots of different sizes in a way that's not very important. Can I try making just try making all the points the same size? Oh dear. Uh, hmm. Well, that hasn't really worked at all. Because now they're just sort of points everywhere. And maybe that's a good visualization, you know, you make lots of points and they lie kind of everywhere. Let's turn the axes back on as well. Have a y axis. Okay, you make lots of numbers. Quite understood by anyone, yeah. Okay, we're going to try and work on it. I know I know live that it didn't land at all. Um, cause you can kind of pull it apart. So it's the kind of idea. That if you pull it apart, maybe that helps show... Oh my goodness, what have I done? It doesn't work at all. Whee! If you take that root 2 point 
and you move it so that you're looking at combinations of ones and root twos in different directions. Not very good, not very good. So I think it's just dies, it's just dies. My attempt to show that, oh, things that of the form a plus b root two actually have some structure to them, if a and b are integers, that the, the kind of, not too bad, you can consider them as being a, a as one axis and root two as the other axis uh, on a kind of grid. The thing I'm trying to illustrate, I guess, is the idea that when you have things of the form a plus b root two, you could imagine them being on a number line, or you could imagine that being a kind of two-dimensional mumble vector space, a kind of two-dimensional thing, um, which is an important idea in field extensions, but maybe not the right thing to do in, in a school talk. So I think this just dies. It's sad to see it go, but I think kill your babies. It's not even my favorite baby. Uh, <laughs> old <laughs> not even my favorite thing yeah right thank you a cool person <laughs> i say it's a bit like the arc and diagram <laughs> no one really likes that because there's a mix of complex number experience lands for a cool right it's exactly like the arc and diagram a cool person because the arc and diagram is showing you normal real numbers but then augmented with ah some complex numbers and nobody ever tries to put the complex numbers on the real number line because where would you put them? That's nonsense. You throw in, you've created this extra concept, I, that you didn't have before, you throw in extra stuff. Um, and you show it as a second axis for a second dimension. Axes. Yep, goodbye, it's gone. It was not good. <laughs> um, so I think this has to be, instead, complex numbers are an extension the reals, but also um, a plus b squared 2 is an extension of reals. I don't really like doing of the reals because the reals contain all of those roots of the quintic. So maybe this is, well, maybe I need to let go of, let go of this being specifically about solving quintics and just be a kind of helpful visualization of what a field extension is. Yeah, it's something like you want to get all of the reals, but you're trying to do that. Yeah, okay, okay. You would like to get all the reals because that contains the roots of your quintic. You would like to get there just by uh, writing down equations with things with nth roots in them. Uh, to get to any reals there, nah, that feels like a stretch, doesn't it? <laughs> you're, only trying to, you're only trying to make specific algebraic reals, really. Oh, don't overstate, don't overstate the challenge. People don't know what a real number is, right? Okay, let's stop saying. Do I say rationals? Hard to use that concept specifically here. Okay, so this bit was a pretty solid fail in that we tried to do some sort of hardcore, here's what the stuff actually is, and it didn't land at all. Roots of unity, I think is, this might be the way in. Yeah. Yeah, okay, show them a kind of argand diagram. The, the point that's maybe worth making, oh, this is not worth making, I can already tell it's not worth making because I'm filled with dread about the prospect but saying it now, um, is that inequalities are not preserved by the automorphisms in the Galois group. <laughs> I don't see, I regret it so much. I regret it saying, saying it so much that I can't with a straight face try it. Um, when we're talking about permuting the roots, we don't care about inequalities. So showing root two on the real axis is not something that's preserved by the by the automorphisms. Um, so its position between one and two is not important. 
uh, one of the automorphisms of that group is to switch all the root twos for minus root twos. Um, those are both things that you've made. If you've got if you've got three plus root six, you can also make three minus root six. And if you swap all the root sixes for minus root sixes, then almost nothing goes wrong in terms of multiplication and addition. Hmm. There's some sort of diagram here for keeping track of those. Uh, and I feel like coordinates is a good way to do it. Uh, to say, aha, the coordinates in here, a comma b means a plus b square root 2. And these are, maybe we don't have the mentioned complex numbers here. Maybe that's an afterthought. <laughs> this is now also, and this is now, this is now good. Ah, it's not an extension of the reals, it's an extension of the rationals. Good question. How does seeing that the field extension has this vector space structure help us with our problem solving? It's a good question. Is a good question. And I need to phrase my answer in terms of things being hopelessly simple. Here it is. Is when when you chuck in the roots of a quintic, you might add in five totally different roots, which would act as five totally new dimensions in your field extension. But it's going to be a very complicated thing. When you throw in all these roots of your quintic, it's like, well, I'm going to make loads of complicated things out of my roots. of. But when you throw in the roots of a polynomial like x to the n minus 1, actually that doesn't increase the dimension by 5 or n or something. It just increases the dimension by one. You gain this one extra root, and then the others are related. Uh, uh, instead of gaining lots of dimensions, uh, lots of dimensions, they're all related. Uh, maybe extend the integers and just use grid points so that you can't have root two on the x-axis. Yeah, problem with using integers, the integers, and they, they were integers in my picture. Problem is, morally, I'm just a mathematician, the integers aren't a field. <laughs> They're not a field, so it's not technically a field extension to, to do that. Um, we should already have rash, rationals, fractions in there. Um, okay. Uh, I have a trippy image, which I'm going to kill. Um, it's a really nice picture. I'm really pleased I made it. It helped me, it helped me understand the structure that you get when you chuck in these things, um, but it makes it look hard. Ooh, maybe use the quadratic x squared equals 2. Yeah, this is good. People know that 2 is irrational, I think. Have no solutions in, in the rationals. Has no rational solutions, I guess. Ah, no, I like saying solutions in the rationals. Ah, whatever. Um, throw it in. Clearly we need to go back and learn about number theory again. It's been like two weeks. <laughs> uh, oh, is it n dimensional vector space? No, because those vectors are not... The things that you're doing there are not... Do, 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 do. Oh, hang on, let me think. Do, 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 do. His nuance is impossible to explain clearly, is maybe the killer comment. <laughs> okay. Uh, fifth root's in blue, fourth root's in red, third root's in green, monochrome analogy comes up there. I saw that as well. Okay. Hmm, there's a square root of two thing here, which might be fun. Mm, 
Okay, tidying around the edges perhaps. Uh, there was a, another Desmos thing that I'm really happy with, but I'm not sure it's the right place to do it. This is annoying. I've got um, I've got Desmos kind of activities and fun that is just maybe not in the right place. Um, maybe if I had to explain Galois theory to some university students or something, then it might be fun to talk about how um, we try playing around with this. Um, the roots are related. Oh, God. So this did take me ages to understand. Because the phrasing that people normally use when they talk about Galois theory is not quite right. People talk about permuting the roots, and I've always imagined that to be like permutations of, here are the roots, there are five of them, and people talk about permuting the roots, and I've always imagined that to be like symmetries of the pentagon, like uh, rotating and spinning the, the pentagon. Um, but it's not quite what they are. They actually look, look like this, where the red points go to the purple ones. So you move this red point here, and there are all these consequences that the other ones all map in this other weird way, where they spin around a different number of times and end up end up on roots. Gawa theory said the roots have to go to roots, but the permutation of the roots is not all of them go round by one. It's really weird and complicated. Uh, and this does turn out to be the cyclic group of all of four, but oh my goodness, it's really complicated. Um, a plus b root 2 is not very clear for this point because root 2 squares immediately to a rational number anyway. Sure, squaring is... Roots of quadratics is tricky if you're then going to talk about the symmetries of the roots because you only get... Yeah, you don't get those relationships. Tea time, isn't it? Uh, Mountain Ash says I have to go make a cup of tea. Uh, it's your invitation to make a cup of tea as well. We're going to take a quick break because we've hit three o'clock. Uh, stay hydrated. Um, after the break, uh, we're doing my favourite bit, which has now got some new images. Um, and we're going to switch to, I think, a good bit of talk about finding patterns and structure, which I'm more confident on, happier about, and I made some nice pictures. We're skipping this slide entirely. Right, good. Okay. <laughs> after the break, um, more reviewing slides for a 5.5 .5 out of 10 school talk I did, trying to discover the good talk that lies within. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, get the kettle on. See you there. Am I going to run an ad? I think I'm going to run an ad. I'm going to run an ad. Sorry to run an ad in response to channel points being redeemed, but it's just how long it takes my kettle to run. Uh, no, uh, sorry. I mean, uh, are you allowed to drink water? No, you're not even allowed to drink water, are you? In fast. At some point later, I hope you get to have a cup of tea or something like that. Right, okay. Uh, I'm running an ad. See you in a minute or two.
Ooh, we've lost chat on the thing. Or maybe it's just because chat's like that. Let's hit the refresh on that. Okay, we're back. Yeah, it did fall from 6 to 5.5. <laughs> I started off by saying it was a 6 out of 10 talk. And then I downed it to 5.5. It's too, too ambitious. Hi, Barry. <laughs> right, okay, that was a long break. My partner's just got back from... Uh, I just go back, catching up. Good. Okay. Uh, second half of this, and I don't know if it was actually a half, but fun times. I feel like this is the good bit. Permutations, that's a word that people have seen in A level, of three objects, fine. Here's a slightly funky way to draw them. Um, yeah, we got the great, great wave going again. All are again, the right shy. Uh, I herb. Uh, right, here's a good bit. I, I made this for the talk. Um, wait, Wolfalov was also there? <laughs> wait, hang on. I thought, I know Thrice Shy's been giving me notes. Wolfalov, you got to join in with the feedback. Oh. <laughs> you got to join in. Thrice Shy is not holding back with the feedback from this. Um, I like this. I gave them these names. And I refused to explain what I was doing. And I'll tell chat. Um, it's because I already had a copy of this table with these things marked in from a different talk. And I didn't want to edit all of them. <laughs> I had it like this, labelled like this, with these names, because I have this slide for symmetries of a triangle in a different talk. Um, the identity symmetry, where you leave the triangle alone. R for rotate. R squared for rotate twice. Uh, and then reflection in three different lines, a line of ver a vertical line, reflection in a line of positive gradient. Oh no, which one's positive gradient? And the camera's flipped. Ah! <laughs> Wait, bottom left is here for you. So line of positive gradient, this one. So reflecting in a line of positive gradient is that, that symmetry. And reflecting in a line of negative gradient. And there's a nice table. So this bit of talk, I like, I've done something like this before, but now I've got a better image. So I was excited to try out the image. Um, and I'll probably rename. Um, this bit goes really well. It's a, here are the three permutations presented in a slightly unfamiliar way to make you think and say, "Oh, look! I mean, if you visualise them, then it's not quite. You know, you know that you know that there are th six ways to permute these objects. Um, but this way gives you a nice visual way to combine them. Um, and mm -hmm, we're doing functions on the right for this. Technique. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter." Um, to do this then that gives you this way to say uh -huh, you permute them like this and then like that and this visualization i think is much nicer than some of the alternatives where you like list you have the numbers one two three and you list where they go to or you list which pairs switch and then you combine them by thinking carefully about how those combinations work the visualization just really helps with the do this then that um, i've talked about symmetries of a triangle quite a lot before i've never been that good at explaining you know do this then that there's a way that you could actually calculate that. We would have to try it with a physical triangle. Ooh, maybe colour in the dots. Maybe colour the dots. Uh, uh, what would I rename them to? I don't know. Let's ask chat. Um, if I'm giving them single letter names, then hmm, these three are the ones where you switch a pair. So if I was giving them name names, I'd probably go names as names. It'd be like preserve three or two or one. What I was talking about. Mm -mm. Hard. I don't really have. I don't really know what I'd call them. Maybe I'll leave it like this. Say it's remaking the slides. Uh, this feels nice. That's like, here's an image of putting them together. It's plugged together really nicely. It helps with the visual bits of my brain. Maybe we should colour them in. Oh, uh, is it a problem that? What colour do you do the strings? So if this is like red goes to red, yellow goes to yellow, blue goes to blue. And this one would be red goes to yellow. So do I colour still colour the lines in black? Maybe I do. And you talk about how this is red goes to yellow. And then, oh, now red's going to blue overall, which is this one, red goes to blue. Yeah, you can do some sort of plug and play. 
So instead of yeah, I, I prefer that to numbers. Uh, coloring, coloring things in is a theme of the talk. Uh, as we'll see when we make a nice operation table for what happens when you do this, then that. Yeah, leave the lines black. <laughs> Good. Um, make a nice operation table. We didn't calculate any of this. Trust me. Um, I like an element of a talk where it's you could go home and work this out for yourself. You could have your have the permutations. I guess you won't know what to call them, but you could make this table. Excuse me. Uh, fill it in. Get rid of the outside to make it clearer. What's going on? I mean, the outside because of the identity. The outside is just a copy of. It's like multiplying by one. Which you say out loud if you can. <laughs> um, the i element is like multiplying by one. Uh, you call it a multiplication table. Because, I mean, it's a table, so you're going to get away with it. It's got some similar similarities to multiplication tables that people have seen before, um, and it's helpful. To try and bridge the gap to think about this. Yeah, it's like adding zero. Maybe I don't say both. <laughs> Lol. The curse of A is like B and A is like C, but hmm, B and C don't really feel that similar to each other. <laughs> I mean, they are, they're all group three. But hey, anyway, right, then color code it which I really like because now we've got a, a colorful picture. And then audience interaction, what patterns can you see? I do this at open day sometimes, it's great fun. People can always see different patterns. Um, uh, the one that I'm looking for, and it's a bit bad of me to do an open-ended question where I'm looking for an answer. I do genuinely love getting lots of answers of lots of things that people can see and notice. And people have told me there's one of each color in each row and in each column, Sudoku. Um, but then you get to ask, well, how are they distributed? Um, and people sometimes spot the uh, the way the left and right of this picture have some similarities similarities with each other. Uh, and people sometimes spot that there's this kind of chevron pattern where the red boxes go up and then the green ones come down. And down here it's purple going up and pink coming down. Uh, it's kind of arch, arch, um, chevron shape. Uh, and usually someone says, ah, they're kind of split into like these hot colors, cold colors, cold colors, hot colors, which is really nice because this is a, a strategy called squint to quotient uh, that I remember learning not in a lecture or in a uh, tutorial or in a class, but um, I was hanging out with some mathematicians including some math students who are a few years older than me. And it's late at night, and one of them just showed me, oh, there's this way where you can color in the elements of your group, and then if you squint, you can see the structure. And what you're doing there is seeing the structure of the quotient of a normal subgroup, um, which is a thing that's quite hard to understand when you first learn it in uh, a course on groups. Um, when you learn it, you learn very algebraic, approach you learn you learn lots of stuff about cosets and you learn some proof that this forms a group and you normally stop there um, nobody in the lectures was ever showing me hey just color it in and then you look at it I sometimes say that I, ha I have the kind of superpower that I can take off my glasses and then I can't see anything <laughs> so my superpower is that I can not see the details and see the bigger picture Ah, that's a, a superpower you have if you can if you have the option to not wear glasses. Um, other people around you can squint to try and simulate what it's like being me to see ah there's kind of something going up there and there and there and there. Uh, and this really is it. It lines up with a, a, a proper sort of mathematics, which is that this group over here, uh, the subgroup is isomorphic to C three, a nice little nice little group on its own. That's weird, isn't it? I'm trying to cover it up. But I also have my hands up so that you could see I was... The top bit has a little C3 structure. Um, and then, I tried to say this, but I'm not sure I said it very well. The, the checkerboard structure of the quadrants is also a thing. The quadrants go A, B, B, A. Uh, and that's also a kind of nice, uh, pretty thing. Glasses off, glasses off at a distance, yeah. <laughs>
You can kind of see it. I'm not quite sure I've got the right shade of red. I think, ah, colour theory. If I used a shade of red that's more, that's less bright and more, I could maybe ch cheat a little bit. I've gone for hot colours, cold colours, but I could maybe cheat by changing the saturation of the colours to be a little bit more extreme. Let's have a go at that. Uh, where's that going to be? Table design? Oh, great, here we go. So if I maybe pick a kind of red that's a bit more pink and a bit more subdued. No, not that. Maybe that. And I'll pretend it's still red. It feels like cheating. No, it's actually a bit washed out compared to the others anyway. No, okay, okay. Forget it. Leave it as red. Um, you know what I mean? The kind of saturation difference pulls out the red ones for me a bit more. I can't see the others. Anyway, never mind. Um, this is brilliant. When I've done it with a triangle before, the gimmick is um, that you have a, I have a physical triangle, which I show people on the on the big screen with a smiley face on it, um, and I get people to suggest a sim suggest symmetries and they suggest rotations first without fail. It's brilliant, um, and then someone suggests a reflection, and I turn the triangle over, and reveal it has a sad face on the back. Um, I think I've done this on the Thursday live stream at some point with the, the gimmick being the triangle has a smiley face on, and when you turn it over, sad face, and you say, ah, oh, the triangle doesn't like that. Um, and that's the gimmick, because then when you get to the structure at the end, what we're looking at is encoded in the group, the, the structure of it having two faces. Um, and it's called the dihedral group, which means two faces. So I'm, I'm very pleased with myself for that gimmick. Can't do it here. I can't do it here because I'm not talking about triangles anymore. Um, well, I'm sorry, then happy face, sad face. Um, hot colours for happiness, sad colours for colour. Just... It's a very good open day talk. I might be doing it this year, in which case, pretend you haven't seen it. Um... Uh, right, good. Uh, personal interest, I also, with some friends, made a stained glass version of this that's not actually stained glass. Um, uh, it's sweet wrappers, but hey, uh, you can't when you see something like this. You gotta make you gotta make yourself a, a go make yourself a copy. I've still got that somewhere. That should probably be. What do I think? If I find it, that should probably be behind me on this stream, shouldn't it? <laughs> it should probably be there. This attractive background that's mostly door. Yeah, so then I'm here, and there's just S3 on the wall. Yeah, right, okay, I'm going to try and find that. Uh, good, okay. Huh. Sometimes I'm sometimes a bit too, sometimes a bit too rose-tinted glasses, reminisce about university, but we did make a cool thing uh, that I should get out of storage. Right, okay. So, skimming the rest of the talk, there's a terrible slide here about trying to link Galois theory back to this simple, simple complicated idea, uh, which I think we're probably going to kill, uh, do it better. Uh, sort of feeble attempt to link everything together. And then some stuff about the actual quest, which I think, skip this, sorry. I think we skip this. And the previous time I did this, the talk was a bit weird. Um, I talked about the actual quest, and I think we'll drop this as well. Um, these are good learning tips. The context of lol, this was a live stream, is pretty good. But I think we also skip this. And then we promoted some stuff at the end. Uh, Oxford Math Club, mailing lists and open data stuff. Uh, <laughs> we also made Q8. Um, Q8 is a very good group uh, because... So Q8 is a group with eight elements. It's not the symmetry group of a polygon. There is such a thing as D8. Um, Q8 is a group where it's non-abelian and it's kind of maximally non-abelian. There's this excellent... Uh, uh, so in, a, in an abelian group, uh, any pair of elements uh, commute. So that means that AB is BA. In a non-abelian group, sum, but not all, 
for pairs of elements. This is not going to be an actual slide, don't worry. Um, so question, as a, as a fraction of uh, n squared, like the number of number of elements squared, as a fraction of m squared, how many pairs of elements in a non-abelian, ah, no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Given a non-abelian group, non-abelian group of size n, how many, how many pairs of elements can commute as a fraction? n squared. And the answer is brilliant, it is 5 over 8. Um, <laughs> good. We haven't seen anyone come in with questions to badly describe. Yeah, our favourite activity, helping people with their homework. Uh, this fact's brilliant. <laughs> um, it says, if your group, if your group um, is non-abelian, pairs of elements don't commute, but it is still a group. It has to follow all of the group axioms, all of the rules for being a group. Um, then can't be that, you can't have, you can't have that many things commuting. What this means is even more than five eighths of the, of the pairs of elements commute, your group's just abelian. Um, it can't take it anymore, suddenly everything commutes. Um, and there are examples of groups um, example on the limit is the group the group Q8. So if you're interested in groups, um, maybe you're learning about groups in A level or equivalent or something like that. Maybe you're at university and you're just starting to learn about finite groups. A really interesting one is Q8, which is a group with eight elements. I don't know why I'm helping you with the concept of eight. Sorry. Um, what level am I pitching at, right? <laughs> People who want group theory stuff, but are unsure what eight is? What am I doing? Um, <laughs> QA is really good. Uh, lots of the elements commute, but not all of them. Lots of the pairs of elements commute, to be precise. Uh, huh. You can look up what symmetry group are quaternions. Oh, let me check what the relationship here is before I say something stupid. And you found Henry Segerman's got a paper on this, or a website on this. Da, 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 da. Oh, wait, you recognise both authors on this paper. So you found this. The Quaternion group is a symmetry group. And you recognise Henry Segerman off, the, off that list? Uh, Henry Segerman is uh, sometimes it does a lot of 3D printing math stuff. Um, I like cool things. Um, I saw some of the 3D printed things in a number file video. Or was it three blue one brown? Or was it Matt Parker? Or was it all of those? Um, v Hot's famous. V Hot's got a YouTube channel. You should look up V Hot as well. Um, Ooh, ha, so they're going to find out that the quaternion group is the symmetry group of a physical physical thing, and I'm wrong. That's fun. Let's have a look at this. Oh, hello. Uh, e okay. So these are things drawn on spheres with symmetry group D4. Very nice. Are you going to draw me a thing on a sphere with symmetry group? What's a monkey block? <laughs> oh, we begin by assembling a hypercube out of monkey blocks. Yes. Ah, uh, here's, here's the group. Good. Okay. There's an infinite line of monkey blocks. There's a ring. Yeah, naturally you've joined them together. Brill. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, Brill. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> this is a great paper. <laughs> Why have I never seen that? Oh, look! <laughs> More fun than a hypercube of monkeys. This is great. Uh, yep, okay. That is a really good insight into what Henry Segerman and Vihar are like. Wait, is this... Is that the monkey that's... It looks like the... <laughs> anyway. Good, Q8 facts. 
Uh, I haven't seen the folded circle snack video yet. I need to watch it at some point. Okay, good fact about groups. So, when I'm doing stuff like this, I like to find out what the good bits were. Quick look at my notes. I've been listening to notes in chat as well. Uh, things that went well in terms of getting a reaction or being nice were hmm, not the Desmos stuff uh, and that. So I think I want to do something pretty harsh, which is delete a bunch of slides um, and delete anything where I'm not happy. Happy. Uh, I'm going to delete this like this. Uh, put something in like this. Would be maybe there's a slide here about Quintix at the end. Love this. Want to do this. Might redo that diagram. Might redo that diagram. Structure by structure by colouring things in. That's a quote for the talk, I guess. Um, this can die. This unfortunately is lovely, but dies. This uh, might be a way in, so we're going to keep this, but maybe move it. This must die. This must die. This uh, could go down here somewhere for now. Don't love it. Going to put it really low down. Whoop. Okay. Um, this must die. This is fine. The tangrams are going to stay for now, and the quotes going to stay for now. Oh, can I do something stupid? Okay, I've got a kind of stupid concept for this. <sighs> stupid concept. Um, I think this should have some sort of transition or animation that's a bit like turning on lights. Um, maybe we make this slide as if it's in the dark. This is so daft. This is not re re not really related to making the slides better, just a kind of another silly gimmick to get a laugh. Uh, right, okay, well, no outline. Fill it with, this is a really silly way of doing black or white text on black. <laughs> Wait, do I need the text to be a different colour? Yeah, maybe I need that text to it. I guess invert it. What would that look like if it if it were the transition? <laughs> so the daft. So the quote comes on screen and it's all dark. <laughs> this is silly. The quote comes on screen and it's all dark. Um, and then I kind of want to see if I can combine combine the ew, that's not nice, that's not nice combine the reveal with also the lights coming on? No, this is silly this is too silly even for me <laughs> let's um, invert it all too silly even for me, it was a silly idea flashbang, yep <laughs> also another reason to delete the incredible picture of all the things made of uh, fifth route unity. Okay. Um, so maybe this needs to introduce some more problems at the top. We're doing quite well by introducing problems and talking about finding some structure or finding something. So maybe there's some slides here about um, squaring the circle. And uh, trisecting, trisecting angles, and then just as one more thing to solve quintics. But there's going to be some explanation here about um, what that means. Maybe it's before. Yeah, there's a bridge here that is geometric. You're trying to square in the circle is a geometric kind of problem. There's a bit like tangrams, and maybe makes the tangrams feel a little bit more involved. Um, 
yeah. And people, then people know the origami fact, which is nice. Um, thank you, Martin Ash. Uh, my memory of that, I don't really know, but somebody told me about it once. Is that origami lets you solve cubics? Was that true? Origami and cubics. There's like extra moves. Uh, okay. Does this help you solve quartics though? Have I read the origami paper? Oh, there's like, okay, it's about solving cubics. In 1936, Marguerite de Bavarloch was the first person to realize that origami can solve general cubic equations and it's thus more powerful than straight edge and cumbrous constructions. Uh, good, okay. Look, okay, uh, this stays. Uh, I kind of want the equations I like there was a suggestion. Oh, I haven't I haven't attributed the suggestion. Sorry, uh, there was a suggestion from someone in chat to have a quintic at the top, and then surprise, no equation appears, which is maybe giving some context for what it means to solve quintics. So maybe it's solving quintics, but wait, what does that mean? And there's maybe there's maybe one quintic. On the screen and then we're doing a little bit more variety of stuff about the things you can do with Galois theory uh, so there's a there's an excuse to talk about the equations again here to say now that's not stupid because you, you know you can solve you know you can solve polynomials I, I've got to get the with radicals I just uh, everybody doing talks draws a line between, on the one hand, giving a good impression of what the maths is like, and on the other hand, being accurate and correct and true and not misleading all the way through. And everybody has, for themselves, maybe for each talk they do, um, a marker that they've put in for how close they want to be to the actual literal truth, don't mislead anyone, don't get anything wrong. Don't say, don't even say the word simple if the group structure at the end is not actually, it's not actually relevant that it's a simple group, it's relevant that it's not a simple group, or whether you join, whether you go for vibes. People can detect. <laughs> Thrice shy says not solving quintics, not a good bit. Ah. You've got to do a lot of extra work. But people who are doing it at uni are way over on the doing it doing it properly end of the spectrum, whereas this talk doesn't have to be. Ah, I do like showing people these. I think I'll probably have another go at these and then kill them after the next time. Uh, then we got the wilds proof. Maybe we want the wilds thing earlier because it's good. Maybe this belongs up here with the ducks uh, as a way in, and then we go to no after the ducks. And then we go into this, do some equations. Right now, hmm. Am I gonna be really? Uh, am I gonna be? Yes, yeah, so what's the link uh, between these? I like to start with slides that have lots of text on and gradually remove the text. Um, what's the link between these problems? And each one is talking about steadily building things. Target thing might be impossible to reach. Uh, key idea, identify structure or pattern or colouring for the things that you can build. So it's like a building with a limited blue set. That's there's the weird distinction of being technical language that's not the correct technical language, but I'm gonna leave it from my maybe I do want a slide like this actually to make it make it more explicit what the the thing is, it could have some pictures on the right of the sort of stuff that we're building. Really quick slide design. <laughs> Help me out, PowerPoint, let's go. Uh, 
I want to get this right, but God, it's something like chop it up and build it again, right? You get to decide. Huh, that now feels a lot like tangrams. Design your own tangram set that you can put back together to make a circle. Is that what squaring the circle is? Ah. More content. That's what this tool needs. Oh, not really. <laughs> not really. No. Is this actually Gamot theory? So just the fact that pi is transcendental. Oops. It would be nice to get kind of correct answers in, right? Well, I try to say anything else was like a more general problem. Solving quintics was like a more general problem. No. A hard question for me is what else can you do with Galois theory? Um, and for me, this talk is good because it's a closely closely related teaching and learning experience where I'm trying to learn Galois theory better and better. And in some sense, being able to give a talk about Galois theory uh, motivates me to learn more. I kind of want another example in here, which means I need to go back and learn more stuff you can do with Galois theory because I'm not super impressed with the set of examples I've got in these slides. Okay, well, we'll think about that in a bit. Uh, links. There's a way to make all of this sound plausible, which is if you try to give people the mental image that you're building something complicated out of simple things. It's not clear what the simple things are in the geometry problems where you're doing a series of operations and have you said anything about making numbers along the way? We're just trying to trisect an angle, right? Um, so there's maybe a little bit of work there to convince people that we're building something. We're trying to construct something. Uh, in the circle square thing, it's constructing a circle with the same area as the square. Which is not the same as taking it apart and putting it back together again. But what is either necessary or sufficient, right? If you could take the square apart and put it together again, you would necessarily have worked out how large it is, I think. So I should read around, but whatever. Like, what, six nines in pi? Oh, that's just a joke. I don't know why it's related. Why is it related to Wikipedia? It's not related. Good, right. Maybe the roots of unity go down a lot. That's a stretch. Like too much structure, or the wrong structure, and that you're supposed to identify it. Okay, because then you can start with a great example. Whee, let's go down here. Great example of... Yeah, a cool person. I'm with you. Um, mumble something about the Roots Forming Group. I'm very mumbly when it comes to this. Oh, I use mumble a lot as a shorthand for um, mentioning some maths rather than precisely explaining it. On the spectrum between precisely explaining it giving it some vibes. Yeah, because now we can do the group theory. We can do some group theory. It's not obviously related to any of the problems. Because um, it's three objects, it's kind of not. But it's an intro to a good, good and relevant bit of group theory. But there's some structure that you can spot by writing the elements in the correct order, colour coding them and noticing the structure. So this flows quite well, I think, from here. It's not obvious what problem we're trying to solve here. It's not obvious what problem we're trying to solve here. 
This is more like um, with the dominoes, uh, the two by one rectangles, every one of them covers a black square and a white square. And if, if proving that was really hard, then you would maybe do some science or some group theory or something to be like, aha, at the end of this 40 minute talk, you will realize that every rectangle covers a black square and a white square because of rectangle science. In fact, it's really obvious that every rectangle covers a black square and a white square. Um, so you don't dwell on that. This is the study of how very simple. I think it's not, no, it's got structure. It's looking, no, 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 back it up, back it up. I'm looking for the structure within it. Shoelaces. Yeah, is that the problem we're trying to solve? <laughs> oh, don't get me started on knot theory. Um, da, 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 da. Throw shows off. Bye, have fun. Enjoy tutoring. Teaching makes you better at learning. Uh, okay. And then maybe there's some quintic stuff at the end. Uh, what do I want to think about in order to in order to pivot into So is is the idea groups? Is it group? uh, Galois theory is good because it introduces lots of groups. theory actually say automorphisms of your vector space hmm maybe an overreach but maybe the idea here is to say oh, mathematicians love finding structure so much that we study the structures and there's a true fact that every group is the subgroup of a symmetry group which is not a very not a very deep fact really um why does it put a yellow line underneath the true fact conciseness. It wants me to say fact. Thanks. PowerPoint, I guess. Um, so understanding symmetry groups feels good. Mm -mm. I'm really bad at typing. Uh, and you should do that for you. Wow, a sort of plug for university maths, let's go. <laughs> no, I don't think that's going to be in the talk, but hey. In particular, you're looking at finitely many things. Is that interesting or relevant? Instead of infinitely many possibilities for what sequence of straight edge and ruler nonsense you might be doing, like finding the intersection point and drawing another circle, I mean, sort of the kind of infinite possibilities there. Uh, Gawad looks at you know, on a completely different level. Looks at a finite group for the field extension of what you can do by solving an additional quadratic, which always has degree two. Ah, don't love it. Don't love it. So then maybe there's some square root two stuff in here. Something I've considered, but not done. <laughs> yeah, do I just want? To, should I just talk about group theory instead? Right? It's hard because, yeah. A way in that I, I've considered but I haven't really done anything with is, is the idea that inside the quadratic formula. Oh. 
Come on, play along here. Inside the quadratic formula, there's this plus or minus sign. Why do I bother circling things? And then inside here, there are some 1 plus i root 3 over 2. 1 i root 3 minus 1 over 2. Those are those take the role of plus or minus signs when you're doing cube roots in a way. Mm, do I like that? Not really. There's roots of unity, bridging to roots of unity. These equations have got loads of complex numbers in. Um, this one's just going to be cleverly plus and minus signs with extra negative things to allow for all the i's. Yeah, I think that one's not going to have anything for me to point out because the fourth roots of unity are lovely. One minus one i and minus i. Whereas these ones, they've got you've got these things going on. Ah, oh, but then you've got a old Kessler fish. But well, why are there two in each of these? Good link. Come back to it at the end, maybe. It's very hard to justify why your formula would have to have things like this in it. It's very hard to justify that, um, as far as I can see. Um, to say, oh no, your formula for the quintic won't work because it would have to have fifth roots of unity in. And then Galois says that he would like to go and permute all of those around with each other. And then, oh no, yeah, you got. Like, it's... What if I don't write down any fifth roots of unity? What if my root is really weird? How dare you suggest that it might involve these roots of unity? I've never heard of them. My formula is actually great and just includes squaring. Uh, mm, so it doesn't feel very authentic or true. So maybe there's just some algebra here. Instead of pretty pictures and complex numbers and argon diagrams, oh, you've got to have some complex numbers. <laughs> you just got to. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe this. Maybe you put a five in. If x to the 5 equals 1, then x squared to the 5 equals 1. So another root is x squared. They're always like that. There's maybe a way in without saying complex numbers. This doesn't have any non-trivial roots, right? They're all complex numbers. And then, and the four non-trivial. This is silly now. We're gonna write this out and then fix it. something in here. Related to each other is what I'm using, which sounds a bit like family trees. Um, I maybe want to workshop that into something more like 
all the same colour. <laughs> I had to open it for a minute. And then I'm going to really work out what my colour analogy is to make that make sense. Um, because then I could do another. I could do another one. But I, I don't know how that's going to fit in with my colour analogy. There's a way here where I've deleted some words to delete non-trivial because in my head I'm thinking, well, the trivial ones also do something nice, right? The trivial root is just the number one, so you can't fault me for including it. It's just not interesting. Um, instead of God, instead of exclusively talking about the interesting content, it's easier to talk about uninteresting stuff as well. This is, I think, this is a stronger root rather than trying to spin them in Desmos or rather than try to convince you with complex numbers that they're generated by Omega. I think the right way to do this is not reference complex numbers at all for this chat about the roots of unity. Oh, that is weird though. We got this, which I might hide at the end because I don't know what it's for. I'm not sure this fact is relevant. And there's maybe something in here to go from groups to. <laughs> the temptation to say they make a simple group and just mean, oh, they make a group that's simple is. Very tempting, but not quite true. The animation is sort of squaring the roots, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, okay. Because squaring is a is a Gawa symmetry is a symmetry of the Gawa group. There's a relevant operation. Yeah. I'd have to admit that they lie in the complex. I'd have to admit that they lie in the complex plane. Ooh. If you know complex numbers, you can plot them and imagine what happens when you square them and see. Way to visualize things. Um, so it's a bit of a leap because we've got to jump to the five things that are in the complex plane, but then we get the Desmos thing up again. Um, now, visualizing complex maps is something I've thought about quite a bit. Yeah. This, this automorphism on squaring is the right phrase. Love it a lot. Um, I've thought about this a bit. How do you visualize complex maps? We've tried like a red and purple for where they were and where they're going. Um, squaring is such a hard one to imagine. It's kind of really hard to imagine. It it was here and now it's here. It's moving. That's not something that people do for what a function. What a functions look like. You never say, "Oh, I want to understand y equals x squared." I'm going to draw the interval naught to one, and then I'm going to label it all going from <laughs> one thing to another. Um, we kind of want to do something like that. Um, let's try put, putting in the let's try putting in the uh, the roots of unity. Oh gosh, what if I press the dot 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 five? Um, four. And also sign of that. Divided by five, probably. How do roots of unity work? No, inside the brackets, please. Cool, we've got a little roots of unity. And then maybe I want to draw a bunch of arrows to show what happens when you square, because it is weird. 
Oh, can we make this look like... Can we make this look like the other diagrams, right? Well, we had five things and there's some lines, it was beautiful. And... Yeah, we're going to try and make this look like the other picture. Uh, we're going to show these in black. Um, oh, this is a bit ambitious, but hey. Ambitious there is code for us. I'm not sure this is great <laughs> content. Okay, how about we have the... We turn off the axes, because I think they're distracting. We have these five points. Maybe they lie in the argon diagram. Maybe, maybe this is not a Desmos thing at all. Maybe this is just a picture with them lying in a little bit of the argon diagram. And then over here, we have them plus three or something. We have some more black dots of the same size, which was 16. And we join the dots for what the permutation is. Uh, let's move them right a little bit more. So to try and visualize this as five things going to five things, linking it is a permutation like we already talked about permutations. So those roots, I've drawn them like this because there's, in the common complex numbers they lie in, this kind of nice structure, um, which is in its way, in a way, its own way of visualizing them. There's kind of just five of them. Maybe they should be in a column. Nah, I like the pentagon, it's nice. It is the excuse to talk about it. Let's do it like this first. Um, now, challenge, I need to draw a bunch of lines. <laughs> do I know how to do that? Yes, I do do I believe in myself because I want the lines to show where they're going might be a bit messy I might want to do uh, uh, something like uh, might want to have that on a slider in case I change my mind about this picture Desmos is sometimes really good at helping you uh, mess around with diagrams before you create them in uh, LaTeX or something uh, to mess around with where you want to show things Oh, I should just tell Desmos to calculate this, right? Uh, yeah, let's think. <laughs> Thinking is for people who know what they're doing. Let's just try this. What happens if I say polygon on this? Oh, it'll do a it'll do a pentagon, won't it? Can it do line? I can't want to do polygon. Yeah, okay, but not with five points. So what do I want here? I want a bunch of lines, Desmos. So Desmos do lines if you tell it to do a polygon with but you only give it two numbers. Yeah, that's that sort of thing. But instead of that, I want <laughs> we're gonna do a whole bunch of lines. It's gonna be messy. Because I've given up on given up on doing it with a vector because Desmos does not respect my vectors. List comprehension, but I would like to do it orthogonal to that. Um, okay, oop. Uh, so I would like to go from there, from this point to this point, but double everything for squaring. Squaring complex numbers is easy. Add on uh, that shift A. And why is it done that? Oh, because I've messed up my x and y coordinates. I've forgotten how lines work. Uh, that's the y coordinate of the first one. That goes here. That's the x coordinate of the second one. That goes here. Good. Okay, line. Right, copy that. Uh, do one. <laughs> this is because I couldn't get it to comprehend a list because it's also got square brackets around it for something else. I'm passing it a list anyway, so you're asking it to do this complicated uh, and this is maybe several slides with a bit of animation to show how this works uh, okay time check is four o'clock should probably wrap up <laughs> four four oh that's pretty complicated I like that let's put the lines in black just to make it look good there we go Mm, don't love the five. Uh, mm, like that? No, I definitely don't want them to overlap. I want it kind of over there. Ooh, okay, okay. And the permutation's weird. This one goes to the second one round. 
The second one's busy going down there. This one's going up here, and I was going over there. So I don't want to put this. <laughs> if you put them really close together, then the lines don't cross. But it's kind of a little bit, kind of a little bit uncomfortably near each other for the the image. Put them far away. And they do cross a bit. I do want crossing like that. They're crossing in the the other one. Uh, maybe I want that, but kind of taller. No, that's not really a. That's an illusion of choice. That's not really a different thing. Oh, it's irritating that they don't. I think that's probably my best bet. Uh, Five point five. Save your work. Uh, root matter. And that's a pun because it sounds like anyway. Never mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's some top quality content. So they're about all the same colour. That's not going to happen. Yeah, we're visualising a permutation using the same way of visualising permutations. Hmm. And then it's not a massive stretch to say, well, now we're thinking about permuting five things. Now we're thinking about permuting five things. I mean, one of them is fixed because it's a stretch. It's a stretch. I'll grant you, it's a stretch. Um, Because in this case, I've looked at roots of one, which includes the trivial root one. Really, your quintic might have no rational roots. Um, this is not really the roots of a quintic. As uh, it's not the roots of a, it's not the roots of an irreducible quintic. Um, this qu this quintic with x equals five, n equals five, has got an obvious root x equals one. It reduces it factorizes. Um, So we're not quite talking about quintics yet, but maybe that's not important. Um, feedback from thrice, thrice shy a while ago, people don't really care about quintics as much as me. That's, I'm paraphrasing a lot, and also they've left, so that's mean of me. Um, now we'll talk about, so, five objects, and then don't actually talk too much about Because what did I just do? <clears throat> I think I saved my work and then also closed the file. Uh, two seconds. Yeah, I kept it right. Saved it. Saved it. Good. Don't actually talk too much about this um, for the symmetry of five objects. A perfect version of this talk, like the ultimate version of this talk, would now have a slide that has 85 on it. 60 things, multicolored chaos. I wonder if anybody else has made that and I can cite them. Oh, if you Google A5, A5 is also a sort of paper. And if you Google color by number, the internet takes that quite literally as well. Hmm. I sometimes forget that I'm using. Sometimes forget that I'm being silly when I call this a color by numbers. That's not what most people mean by color by numbers. That's the joke. But then I forget that when I Google it. So if you Google A5 color by number, then you just get uh, printing activities, eBay listings. Um, looks quite nice actually. <laughs> yes, that's that's already that's already found the thing that I wanted. <laughs> Which means that I might be making a thing. Oh, hello. You're better at Google than me. Ah, <gasps> it's perfect. It's on Wikimedia and stuff. That's lovely. It's this. <laughs> that just looks like a printing error. That's brilliant. That's really good. I could look at this for a long time. Excellent stuff. It is glitchy, isn't it? 
it like it gets worse and worse from left to right. <laughs> this is lovely. Wow, what's that? What's this three by three bit doing? It doesn't come back, does it? This is great. I like this a lot. I sort of want some explanation. Oh, hello. Uh, Colour black for the identity element. Own work, Roderick Khan. Good job, Roderick Khan. This is brilliant. So this top row here is in order, of course. But then that's not a subgroup because it really kind of looks like there's a chunk here. But the, the structure doesn't go across because of all the glitchiness on the right. Kind of looks like it's in blocks though, doesn't it? This is so good. Right, good, we're using this. Link. Lovely, right, cool. I think we'll call it there. We've got, I think we're getting closer to a good talk, which <laughs> perhaps uh, is more about group theory, which makes sense. Groups are closer to what you do at A level, there's less less stuff going on. Um, but I'm very interested in this idea about presenting the presenting the um, per, per, permute the roots, presenting that in the same way that we present this, so that it's explicitly linked to being a kind of permutation of this permutation group. Because this this quintic is really simple and it's its its symmetry group is is actually fine. Um, in fact, you can write down the roots, right? Um, you can involving group five, right? Yeah, there's a quartic. Yeah, because they're a, they they're from a quartic. They involve. I've googled it, like root five and stuff. really nice it's phi one of them okay so it's not particularly it's not really this quintic that's got bad structure it's in general yeah again we're getting there this is simple this is simple a general quintic might permute all five of its roots with its automorphisms and that would be hard simple hard simple hard not too bad this picture's got to look not too bad <laughs> that's that's the challenge if you want to give the impression of what Galois theory is like, that picture's got to look not too bad. Not too bad. It's just doing something. It's just doing nice permutations. Oh, that's a shame. <sighs> anyway. Okay, right. I think I'm going to call it there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining in on this uh, journey of feedback and adding up extra things. Um, I'm going to be in my professional live stream on Thursday for work, um, but I'm taking a couple of Sundays off uh partly because it's easter uh i might do i've got a few days off i might do something weird um not a whole week of learning galois theory again don't worry um the regular sh regularly scheduled sunday stream will come back in uh, i guess three sundays from now there might be something else going on on this twitch channel we'll find out um otherwise see you on thursdays have a lovely uh rest of the weekend uh, take care everyone see you around bye Michael, ah, there you go. Uh, yes, good. End stream now.